It's the Higher Standard Podcast. I am your host, Chris. You already know. Let's jump right into it this week. Before we get into this week's guest, who is one I am extra proud to talk to and talk to you about, Ali Hojat. He's the CEO of First Class Exotics. The guy is is doing things in a big way in the exotic and luxury car rental business, but he's also a friend of mine. I've known him for over 20 years, well before either one of us ever really finished school. We were kids. But before we get there, I got to tell you, I'm in banking. You guys know that. You know that that's kind of what I do as as a day-to-day, nine-to-five job. And I love banking. I love that space. I got some law and some real estate stuff, but banking is what I do for the bread and butter of, of what's really made me who I am today. And I'm extra appreciative of that experience. And I can tell you firsthand Banking is one of those things where it's a, the value proposition in the business is your service. You can go anywhere and get a loan or make deposits. There's really not a lot of difference. We all have the same FDIC insurance, and we all have relatively the same technical capabilities now. So you really should be getting good service from every bank trying to keep you. Well, that was not the case for me today. And this is not me taking shots across the bow at the big box banks, but man, today was supposed to be a simple day. Chris was going to go open an account at Wells Fargo. Then I was going to go to Bank of America, close several accounts, and have all those, all that money transferred to Wells Fargo, and then have that Wells Fargo be the account that all the mortgage payments come out of. Just some easy property management shifting. No big deal. Man, six and a half hours later, not to mention three more hours of phone call, I haven't gotten any of this stuff done. I got the account open at Wells Fargo. It took me five branches. The fifth branch finally had a banker. The four previous to that just told me, look, all we have are tellers here. We can't help you. Sorry. Go call the other branch because they couldn't call themselves. And when I called, nobody answered. Get to the fifth branch. Thank God this lady felt bad for me. She hooked me up. We got Wells Fargo sorted. Great. Cool. Then I go to Bank of America. I'm there at 3.50. They close at 4 o'clock. The store manager, the, the branch manager, whatever, wouldn't let me in. The, wouldn't let me in. Said, yo, we close at 4. Come back. I'm like, well, you guys close at 4. A, that's weird. Okay. And B, y'all ain't open the weekends no more. So how am I? Come on, man. I got a job. I got things to do. I get on the phone with them for hours. Couldn't get anything resolved. Kept transferring me around to different departments. It's like, y'all y'all just don't want my business. Just tell me you don't want my business. I get it. In any event, those of you may be asking the question, why I don't bank with my own company? The last thing you want to do is be that guy who banks with, you know, banks your own company, then your own paychecks coming in. Employees can reverse engineer your salary. Plus, you don't want to have all your money there. It just, it's a bad look. So I like to spread things out and have my banking relationship, primary banking relationship with one or two banks. And then I have my primary business relationship with two banks. And I spread it out a little bit just because it works better for me to kind of block out those different relationships via different transactions and really have them separate. That just works for me. So anybody who, who might be curious, that works well for me. I know a lot of people are all about the relationship at one single bank. And I do have a larger relationship with one bank, but it works. So if you're curious, that's why. So this week's guest, as I alluded to, Ali Hojat is a long, long time friend. But if you're like me, I don't like anybody judging me on who I was 20 years ago. So I make a a pretty conscious effort to really see people as who they are today, not as who they were way back when. And sometimes I forget Ali has gone through so much. This dude has been through ups and downs and mental health stuff and physical problems. I mean, guy almost lost his leg. We get into that, obviously, in the podcast. It's a crazy story. And he breaks a little bit of that down. But it doesn't take away from the fact that adversity builds character and his entrepreneurship, his journey has been one that's been such a beautiful rise. This luxury, exotic car rental business, First Class Exotics that he's a founder and CEO of has grown so significantly. I mean, he's getting calls from Hollywood to do shoots and he's driving around in, in some really, really special cars. He's got celebrities at some of these shoots and definitely a lot of people that that engage with him. Are, are are really kind of movers and shakers, and that's really furthered his network and built him out as an entrepreneur. He was one of the first guys to do this. I know you see a lot of people online who are the, in new in the space, and they don't necessarily treat it with the same value proposition of customer service and brand loyalty that that Ali does. Like he he takes it up a notch because he cares, and it goes all the way back. And we talk about where that comes from. But he said something in this interview that really, really resonated with me. I'm a dad, you know, y'all know that. He said that the joy that he gets from seeing a, a dad and his kid or you know, a mom and, and her son or daughter go out with the car and, and this like love affair and fa- you know, this passion that they get from it is so intoxicating. That's, that just resonates. You, know, you got a guy who cares more about the connection and making people happy than he does necessarily about being somebody huge in the industry. It's that passion, that, that, that pursuit that builds wealth. I mean, we talk about that all the time, right? I really hope you enjoy this episode because it's fascinating. It's different. 
And honestly, I didn't, I didn't remember some of these things. So they caught me a little bit off guard too, because I forgot how much this man has gone through and some of the things that he's done. He's the definition of perseverance. He's the definition of overcoming adversity. And he's a great friend. Ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into the podcast with the one and only Ali Hojat. Before me sits one of the sexiest brown men I know, a man I've known for, damn it, was 20 years? Probably close, close to 20 years, yeah. Close to 20 years, best 20 years of your life. We started off with a guy just playing basketball with me socially, and now runs, I mean, how, how many businesses do you run now? Uh, we're working on, at the moment, probably three big ones and some smaller ones, but yeah, for the most part, three, one big one, NFT dropping. <laughs> and right now we're sitting in your luxury exotic car rental business where uh, you have some pretty nice cars on the floor. I want to know how you got here. But before we do that, I want to know about the journey. So when we were kids, way back in the day, you were working at Wells Fargo, right? Yes, sir. How did you get from Wells Fargo to here? It was uh, 12 years of uh, kind of hell. At first, it was actually a, a lot of fun. I actually loved going to Wells Fargo and doing my daily things. And then honestly, towards the end, it was just like getting too much. I was becoming overweight. I was uh, literally having panic attacks all the time. Were you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was bad. Because you were fat or not, or just because mm, you were stressed? Because of the stress and the constant, like it was never good enough. It was always like, do more, do more, no matter how good I was doing it was just like they were on my ass all the time so wow so wells fargo is on you to do more like more production wise yes sir yes sir it's crazy um, how like those big businesses can can do that right and like, then and then you know a few years later they got that big huge lawsuit for the whole thing that they were forcing everyone to because they were opening account. up fake accounts and shadow accounts and yeah, yeah yeah it was all bad they it lost was, their ceo as a result of yep, that yeah yep, yep. it went i was going through a rough time at that time so I actually went to see a therapist at the time so I can get my mind right because I just couldn't take I all the pressure yeah yeah it, it, no. was the, was ju it was solely Wells Fargo or I mean was it like life and your pressure too I mean because you had high expectations uh, right well I always just push myself always to do better I don't like being like second so I was always trying to push to be ahead of everyone else but but it was just like the pressure got so much to me and I was working like literally I'd be the first one there and I was always the last one to leave pretty much uh, I, I don't know you know me uh, my customer service has always been so good um, it was like pretty much every customer would always want to wait for me so I would always get stuck literally the entire day fixing problems and it was kind of like hell at first but then I got used to it I was kind of managing everything and then the pressure of sales and everything else just it was just bombarding me like from every angle and then I was just kind of like at a point where I had to leave one day to go to the hospital because I was literally thought I was dying because wow. a panic, like full, attack, full panic attack full panic attack and at the time I didn't know what it was so I thought I was literally dying but I had a few uh big ones and then I kind of got it under control after I think I saw a therapist for about a year but kind of got my all like was it all work related or do you have like personal shit? no it was pretty much all work because i like to push myself and i don't like to kind of slack and waste my time if i'm like doing something i like to do as best as i can pretty much so it was always me myself putting a lot of pressure on me on top of everyone else kind of like being behind me like do more do more you're the best when i opened test and legacy you know the, the branch, yeah 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 I opened that branch up and I was doing so good that I was literally doing like enough work for two, three bankers. So they wouldn't promote me nor would they let me leave because they were scared the numbers that the branch is gonna drop so much. So I went through that for a while. Finally, after a year and a half of uh, kind of pushing my DM, I was like, dude, I, I gotta move or I'm gonna quit. And then I, they finally moved me up and moved me to Irvine. But yeah, it was it was a lot of pressure. It so was. So how did you know it was time to leave? Like, when when did you decide like enough was enough? I gotta get out of here. Well, when I started getting the panic attacks and I saw my health just kind of deteriorating, I was I was ready to pack up. And at the time, I think it was right when I left, I took a leave of absence because my therapist said I need to stay away from there for a while. So once I left, uh, I started kind of working on my own business because all I ever did was work on other people's businesses. So I kind of understood the whole business aspect of things so you think you were too loyal i was loyal very loyal but too loyal 
you think you think you were loyal to a fault? Probably, probably. Yeah. I put a lot on myself and kind of killed my own. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and like I said, I just like to be good at what I do. I didn't half-ass shit. Like a lot of times when you call people, like they really don't understand their own jobs. They don't know what they're doing or how to fix things. And I was probably like one of the only people. That's why literally like managers everywhere were like, you want to come work at this branch? You want to come work for us? And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to stay here because of my clientele. I, I'm always loyal for my clients. That's, that's one thing. And they followed me from branch to branch, you know, everywhere I went. And that big thing, I mean, you know, my accident. Let's when talk I, about that. I think because I remember crazy. that as a kid, it was crazy traumatic. But you were horrible. on a motorcycle. Yeah. And you, you want to break down the whole accident? Because the fallout was nuts. But that had to shape your life too, right? Like It, it did. It definitely did. October 5th of 2003. Yeah, that's when it happened. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you were on the motorcycle, you, you took a bit of a fall. It wasn't a bit of a fall. It was it a was, real big fall. It was a big yeah. fall. Yeah, doing my stupid normal things. Uh, I was uh, doing probably about 100 miles an hour, doing a wheelie standing up on my motorcycle on a truck bypass, and I uh, kind of did a Superman off the off ramp, Ugh. landed 240 feet down on the five freeway with my leg in my own lap, just squirting blood everywhere until my eyes rolled back in. They were talking about amputating your leg back yeah. then, right? Like, yeah, the only uh, thing that saved my leg was my mom. Yeah, your mom was in the hospital telling him not to cut it off, yeah. not to cut it off. Yeah, like, and you know who had to make the phone call? Yes, I do. Omar had, did. Yeah, a mutual friend of ours had to make that phone call. Omar had to make that phone call and to my parents. About, oh. And he was like, bro, I didn't even know how to call them. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what I was going to do. Like, I didn't know if you're even dead or alive. It was, it was pretty bad, yeah. So, I mean, everything that's happened throughout my life literally has been something that I grew from and kind of like understood kind of what my purpose was and what I want to do. So, I mean, I, I get joy out of seeing people happy. Like I didn't really get into this business with the cars. I mean, obviously everyone loves exotic cars. I yeah. love cars since I was a kid, but I got into it because the joy of seeing like a kid that comes in here and his dad, you know, rents a car and takes him to school. That's worth more to me than like a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks. So do you think that's, I mean, I know you as a, as a good guy. Like I know you as a stand up dude. Thank you. Who, who may be a little dirty behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> Just jokes, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but look, so that was, that was, that was, that was, like, that was my younger days. Was, yeah, say. my younger days too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we all, we all went, <laughs> we all went but, through that stage. But do you think it's, it's the authentic like love for the business is the reason why you've been, cause you went from a period where you were stressed out at work, like having panic attacks, overweight, which I remember those days, you were yeah. fluffy, I loved it. I was like two, I hit like two, 30 almost. Really? I'm, I'm like two, almost 250 now. Well, you're like also seven feet tall. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm it's, five eight. It's not a good look when my shirt's off. Let me tell <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you, do you think that's the reason why why you're happy now? Because you're clearly working hard now. I'm actually probably working harder now than I was even back then. But yeah, I'm happy. And it's it brings me joy to be able to do my own thing and be on my own schedule. And and actually, like these cars, like are motivational too. Like I swear, I see like I literally rent cars to people, and next thing I know, they're out there hustling, trying to make more money so they can go buy their own. Which I've seen it happen many, many times. It's like a taste, a taste of the life. Yeah, they you want. you give them a taste, and they want more. That's how people are. Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. So you leave Wells Fargo, you take a leave of absence, and what what's the business that you start working on right away? Right off the bat, uh, as soon as I left, I kind of jumped balls deep into the vape business. That's right when it was kind of blowing up. So we got a vape shop, uh, me and my partner, Chris, who's still to this day, one of my closest friends. Yeah. Uh, even though we had a falling out of that business, but we still, friendship stayed very Unlike very you strong. and me, who you never talked to for like years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really we'll, care we'll about you friends. much. Yeah. <laughs> the other Chris in your life who you don't care the about. The other Chris. <laughs> He's bald too, tatted up just like me. So we're like <laughs> yeah. twins, but he's Asian. I had a hair transplant, bro. Don't use my hair against me. Uh, really? It's not real. Yeah, it looks this is, good. This is all fake. Hey, yeah, you look good, bro. Right? <laughs> You're hairless on the arms and legs, and you got hair on top of it's your head. Up, right? like, I'm, I'm the other way around. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I mean, fun. I shaved my arms today. Or as long as you got it somewhere. Right? So yeah. you and Chris start the vape shop, and all yeah. goes well. You leave Wells to do the vape shop then full time? Uh, yeah, while I was in the transition of being on that leave of absence, I started, um, actually took some of my 401k out of Wells Fargo to start that up. Right off the bat, yeah, as soon as I started feeling a little better and I got like my whole 
anxiety and uh, my health kind of situated a little bit better. Um, when I can actually think clearly, I started doing the vape thing and we could have took it pretty far. It was just the lack of, uh, I don't know how to say it. I guess a lot of times I like to have fun when it comes to business too. I'm not all business uh, all the time. I'm trying to the lines. The lack yeah. of, of seriousness in the business Well, maybe? there was a lack of seriousness little, little bit of lack in the of business. We had, we had a lot of fun. I mean- but You we, were young. How old were you then? Uh, it was like, what, 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, uh, probably about 10 years ago, yeah. Yeah, I think it was like 2012, I wanna say. Somewhere around there. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a different mindset between the two yeah, decades, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 because I always like to have fun. I mean, shit, I, I studied my ass off when I was in school. I mean, literally never went out, never did shit. This is only up to high school. After high school. <laughs> I was going to say. After high school. I remember going out distinctly with <laughs> some things we shouldn't be doing. After high school, I just let loose. It was over. Uh, but I did. I was like straight A student, never fucking went out. And I think maybe that's one reason why I like to be out and be social and got into the whole club game and doing the promotions and when did that happen? Were you at the vape shop when this was going on? When you were at yeah, the club scene? Yeah, I always, I always had the promotion thing going throughout. Even Wells Fargo, I was still doing. We were probably doing like three, four nights a week at least. So I remember that. How did I always wondered, and maybe this is the reason why you had anxiety. I'm gonna ask you straight up. But it might be because you were, you were working in the day at Wells Fargo like yeah. a normal nine to five job. Yeah. And then you, like, you had maybe a couple hours, and then you were right into the clubs doing yeah. club promotion, till like early morning hours yeah, like some, how much sleep were you getting a day honestly my body got used to literally sleeping maybe three to five hours max a day that's i mean to this day still i feel like i'm 45 now but to this day i think i still when i go to sleep if i sleep past like five six hours i just wake up like a little groggy and can't really think straight so my whole body and mindset is kind of because that i was doing the clubs for almost Damn, I think like almost 12, 14 years. So it was a long time. Do you think that was a helpful experience? I mean, the, the problem- It was definitely seeing, helpful with the network that I got from the club. It was definitely worth it, I would say. And of course we had a lot of fun. We did a lot of things, but- well, yeah. I remember some of the things you did. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a lot. <laughs> but so, okay, let, let's, let's walk this through though. I want to be pragmatic about this. So you're at Wells Fargo, you got a relationship, you're in the clubs too, you got relationships. You, you have to think that your relationships from the club scene where you were actually like enjoying the people you were with were more valuable in business today than any of those relationships at Wells, right? A lot of them, yes. Yeah. A lot of them to this day, I still connect with them and use them for business stuff to this day. But yeah, yeah the network that I got from the whole club scene and just being in this scene for such a long time, it was definitely beneficial. I mean, health-wise, it probably took off like a good 10 years off my life. But I'm trying to regain those 10 years back somehow. Yeah, because you're a vegan now, that's why. Well, I was vegan. Are you not anymore? I, Thank God you've seen the light. We, no, no, no. We, no, we no, beef no. together? I, I don't eat meat or Come on, chicken. Come on, man. I, I started eating. I'm like somewhat pescatarian, but I'm still not having like dairy and stuff. I'm going to get you back on the... Uh, no. Nah, don't worry. Uh, I'm, I'm actually... A couple weeks. We'll I'm actually... Alive. Like, honestly, I'm thinking about being full vegan again because I just felt so much better. And it, it's crazy, but it really like... The mindset you're in when you're vegan and your body is like i think in like harmony with your mind is just i think it's a whole nother level because ever since i started eating fish and like a little bit of cheese here and there because my girl obviously you know my white girl she loves pizzas hamburgers in and out all the good God, stuff i like her already i don't even know the uh, chicken she sounds uh, like a real solid human to bro, me. she's solid Long, she's not a vegan she's solid no she's not vegan she's a smart person i like yeah, her already. she she doesn't like eating slabs of meat like steak and whatnot but she does love no in and out i get that yeah, yeah, yeah in and out for sure but yeah so the vape shop didn't work out ultimately how did you get into this business like, how did you decide that that this was the business for you next it honestly just kind of fell on my lap. Uh, to be honest, it was a friend of mine, which we kind of met at the clubs here and there because he used to kind of book bottles and tables with me. And we kind of had the same kind of uh, friends, mutual friends somewhat. He approached me, this is still while I was at the vape shop towards the end of the era for my vape shop. So he approached me and he kind of was like, 
do you want to try to rent exotics with me? And I was like, I was just kind of thrown back and I didn't know what to say. I was like, what do you mean like rent exotics? What are you talking about? I was like, none of us have any Lamborghinis or Ferraris or any of that. And back then this stuff was not everywhere like it is now. So he hit me up and was like, let's, let's do some work. Let's see if we can rent cars. I said, I was like, kind of over the whole vape shop anyways and kind of went out, out because I, I knew we weren't going to grow from that point. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let me just clean up and start this. So just kind of jumped into it. Did you, you didn't do any research at all? I mean, did you guys know? Or were you just like, look, this sounds like a good idea. We had no idea. Dudes are out there making money. We can do this too. There, I mean, there wasn't anyone out there making money. I mean, there was only like the big boys out in Beverly Hills, like the Beverly Hills rent a car. Because nobody was running exotics back then. Nobody was doing like crazy, like focus only on exotics. I don't think there was anyone back then. I mean, LA, they had a couple big guys that were always into exotics, but Orange County, nothing out here even uh beverly hills that was out here they were moving out of orange county because they didn't see any growth out here but we literally borrowed like a couple of his clients ferraris and started renting them out and so how did that, so, the, the, so the, okay, i don't know the business so i have to ask questions because yeah know. yeah so when you started like you you just borrowed other people's cars to rent out and do you pay them for the day and yeah. you, like arbitrage the money or how does that yeah, we, start? we kind of did a split with the owners. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I explained this business model to so many people, and I see the next day they're like out there opening their own business. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> want to tell anyone yeah. else. So, so you but, had your creative way to get started. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we just borrowed cars to to start and see where it goes. And and the traction was crazy because at the time uh the weed game was getting really big too so there was a lot of guys with a lot of money they had a lot of cash to a lot of, a lot of and, dispensaries and people were opening up and it was legalized and you and, know in some places was, but yeah, not in was, california yet it was it was actually getting to a point where it was almost like legal at that time when yeah. we started and and it was crazy because everyone wanted more cars they're like what else you got what else you got so actually this car was the first lamborghini we bought was it really wow yes amazingly it came back in my shop because my rap guy he bought it from my old partner just last week oh wow so it was uh crazy yeah this was one of my original cars that we actually bought off the lot the first lamborghini we ever bought and uh that had to be a good feeling right like did you feel like okay yeah. we're, we're, it's a new level for us when you do it's, that it's a whole nother level because you're like probably like early 30s you know i never thought i was going to be driving these cars like every day all over the place and i was like it was a, this was a dream as a kid you know, I always I was like, fuck! I always had Lamborghini posters everywhere. I was like, I want I a Lamborghini too. one day. Lamborghini, yeah. Ferrari. Bro. I never even thought about Rolls Royces and Bentleys. Oh, and now yeah, they're yeah. everywhere, right? Like, yeah. Now, now that's the next one for sure. I need a. You know, when when you're a boss, you have the Rolls Royce. Then you know you made it. I think you made it already. No, nah, thank awesome. you. But we're we're trying. Incredibly we're, handsome too. We're trying to level up. Yeah, unfortunately. A lot of people jumped in the game in the last like two years and kind of messed up the whole business. Social aspect. media is doing a lot of that. So I want to talk about that. I knew we were going to get there at yeah. some point. I'm excited to get your opinion on this because yeah. so much of this shit on social media right now is about these young kids jumping into the business. And it's almost like they're being predatory as fuck. It's not like they're trying to run a service based business. It's like they're trying to flex online and it's not the same thing. Like you have to have a lot of thoughts on the shit you're seeing right now, right? I, I do have a lot of thoughts and I don't really judge anyone for what they do. It, it does hurt the actual business aspect of like the rental game because when we started out cars were easily going out for you know 1500 a day like you can find an aventador for less than like three grand a day nowadays since like literally every corner you go to there's a rental company um you can find aventadors as cheap as like 16 1800 bucks a day which doesn't even make sense for a you know half a million dollar car to be rented out at yeah. at a rate that, that that makes no sense because not, you can't even cover a rim or and those cars unfortunately have a lot of problems so every time they go out they come back there's something wrong with it so i kind of let go of that whole aventador thing the higher end cars are a lot more harder to rent than like your typical huracans or or a mclaren so or, most people who, who are watching this who are probably aspiring to that don't know that there's a different i would say levels within exotics too like so like Huracan's a completely different animal than Aventador, right? Like they're yeah. they're completely half different. The price. Yeah, half the price. 
I more mean, of an entry level vehicle, but at the same time, still, still exotic. Honestly, I would take a Huracan over an Aventador all day because no matter how bad you beat this car up, I mean, this car is what, 2015, seven years old, almost 65,000 miles on it. And I've never, I'd never had this car break down. I mean, we've gone through, I don't know, 12, 14 Huracans, and not one has ever broken down on us. So besides the accidents, Breaking down, best cars ever made. So how many? How I want many a sponsorship exotics? from Lamborghini, by the way. Wait, what? I want a sponsorship from Lamborghini. I want you to have a sponsorship from Lamborghini too. <laughs> Make sure you call yeah, me. No, it's just I'll be I'm, I'm, I'm number one salesperson. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't even know how many Lamborghinis I've sold myself, but there's been a lot. All right, so you have seen every kind of exotic you could possibly imagine, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, you've seen them all. I mean, for everything from like lower end, like Lambos and Ferraris to like the Rolls Royce and the Bentleys. Everything. You had to pick one today to drive, like daily drive or drive a lot. Like, what, what would that be? Uh, at this age now, I would this probably age. have to go with the Rolls, man. Uh, this age now. Well, that I mean, old, I, that's I what mean, you're saying? I mean, I've gotten all those cars out of my system. So at this point, I like more, like, more comfort and like, a little classier. I mean, trust me, don't get me wrong. I love driving my like the Lambos any day of the week, but but like a daily, I would definitely love like a Rolls, maybe like a Ghost, maybe even a Phantom with a driver. Maybe you can drive me around. I would drive you around. I'd be very good at it, I'm telling you. I got I got hair now, so I don't look like a total bald driver. <laughs> no, we got to put a cap <laughs> on you <laughs> if you're going to drive me around. <laughs> no, nah, Rolls for sure. I love Rolls, man. Really? I've never actually driven a Rolls nothing beats that car it's literally like you're just not only does it have the balls if you want to take off it'll take off it's just like you're floating on air i can't even explain it but i mean with every car it's like such a difference in drive you can't really pick one over the other it's just like it depends who drives it and what kind of drive you like me personally i've always been lambo just can't get that out of my system really no yeah. Ferrari? No class, class, class? Uh, Ferraris are cool. I mean, the 488 we used to have, it was amazing, fun car. It's rear wheel drive, so it, it, it was very easy to lose control of that car. A lot of these guys, uh, they're all wheel drive. It's, I don't know, for some reason, it's it feels like it's more able to handle um, but some some guys like loose cars. They like to like these are too boring for them. They want a car where they can lose control, know, fishtail, and or that, out. Do that can be good as a business though, right? Like no, you don't, hell you don't want clients no. fishtail no, in no. the parking lot. No man. I mean, I wish I could show you the picture of the car that just uh, got totaled last week. Oh, you have ones to get totaled? Not mine. Unfortunately, one of my other uh, guys out in Huntington. Yeah, it was bad. What happened? What kind of car? I mean, lucky the guy survived. They rented out to a young kid. He was, I think, about twenty one and kind of uh, doing about 80 on a residential street and lost control because again, a lot of people don't, they don't understand the power of these cars. So you just like to push them and then he lost control and ran to a tree, the whole front end all the way is gone. Oh my God. Yeah. Whatever happened to the days, I'll never forget when I was a kid, I, I was like 20 and I was looking forward to being 21. I went to my parents, we went to uh, Catalina Island. Oh yeah. And they had like a rental place on the island. You can like rent certain things. I think it was like go-karts and stuff like that. But you had to be 25 to rent. Yeah. What happened to those rules? It is 25. Is it 25 still? Typically, we try to keep everyone over 25. We do make exceptions. Um, obviously, if it's guys we know, and I know guys that respect not only me, but the business, and they, I know they'll take so care of So you're a racist car. is what you're saying? Uh, it's not, uh, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> nothing to do with race, but I, I guess. <laughs> So no. guys, you know, guys, you respect. You'll, do, you'll make exceptions on, on a case. Yeah, because case we know a lot. Of, we know a lot of younger guys that are like big in the social media scene and stuff, and and they've known me for a while. So if they need to take a car out, they want to do shoots with it, whatever. I don't mind doing it. Plus, a lot of them drive a lot of these cars around anyway, so they kind of know how to handle them. So Is that weird to you to see like the younger generation because it's crazy. There's a different. There's a different it's vibe. When we were kids. It wasn't like that. Like you it's didn't crazy. have that possibility. Bro, no, I was like, happy in my Honda. I remember the Honda. Now, now these I kids are, too, yeah. bro. Now these kids are like twenty, twenty-one, and they're like stressing about not having a Lamborghini. I'm like, bro, relax. You got so much time. The social pressure is real, though. It, we it, see everybody else with the blue check mark next to their name. They're that's verified. All it is. They got this level. That's all it is, man. It's just that it just puts a lot of pressure on these young kids, and that's that's part of the reason. Like 
my whole thing with the NFT project that we'll talk about. It, yeah. It's it's related to mental health, and we really want to give back and kind of make the youth understand that they have time and not to put so much pressure on themselves. It's I don't want to skip ahead or anything, but it sounds that sounds interesting. So our whole thing, because me and my partners, uh, we've all dealt with a lot of uh, things in the past two years, especially with that has to do with mental health and people kind of being depressed and kind of taking their own lives and whatnot. I mean, I'm sure you've seen my post. I've lost like four or five of pretty close friends and it was very, very kind of hit me hard for a minute. I couldn't even, I mean, I went for weeks and I couldn't like really function at work. I couldn't like get my just mind the reality right. Of, of I like just couldn't understand or? that they were gone. And like one of them was like, he actually ended up, yeah, sorry, I get goosebumps. I can't even talk about this guy. That's he right. makes me, so, he makes me sad, bro, because he was such a good kid. And I actually met him. He was one of the younger dudes that rented my cars and we became like super tight, like super fast. Like I was going hanging out with him. We went out a few times. He would come here, hang out with us. And then I just found out he passed and it just like, I couldn't believe it. And, and then same with my partner too. He had a few instances and he had his own family issues due to mental health. So our whole project, is with the exotics and uh we're trying to build a club and then definitely trying to give back to youth and kind of trying to do what you do and kind of teaching them like bring people on like our podcast and uh kind of kind of paving the way for them so they're not like pressured into so much things it's you think it's social sad. media you think it's the environment what do you think it causes because you're a guy who was, who was young, who was motivated, who went to do the, the, everybody, like when you were younger, man, you go work the corporate job, right? Like, and I worked for Wells Fargo too. I was a teller. Yeah, that's I where I started. Yeah, it was a teller line, right? You did the thing. You think it's because like society puts this pressure on you, so you go do it, and then you have this pressure to continually build on something. I mean, why is it so parasitic? Like, why do you feel so trapped? <sighs> It, it, it's this weird pressure. And then later on, so we didn't have social media like it is We now. didn't. No, we definitely then, didn't. So now these kids are at, at, like, let's say the kids at Wells Fargo right now working. They're seeing other kids with driving, little blue check marks next to their driving, name, driving the Lambos. Doing YouTube, making all this money. Yeah, crushing it. With, and they're like, why am I not there? What am I doing wrong? And they keep yeah. putting all this pressure on themselves and kind of like getting, like kind of digging themselves deeper instead of just being like, hey, it's cool. He made it good for him. I'll do my thing and I'll make it too. It just takes time. I mean, fuck, I didn't realize what I was doing until in my 30s. You don't look I a mean, day over 50 though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? This is this is all from uh, not sleeping for about 12 years. You look good though. I'm not look. Yeah. I'll bullshit aside. This is not because you're a vegan. So don't get me all preaching you vegan lifestyle stuff. You look good for your age. Thank you look you. good. Thank you. Thank I got you. way more gray hair than you. It's, it's called having kids no, though. My whole beard is actually gray. I just color it. Do you really? Yeah. Make, Fuck, that looks good. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's gray. Yeah. Make sure it stays clean and crisp, bro. Nicely, nicely done. If, if I would never guess that. If I shave it, it's white. Is it just for me? I look is like, that is? I look like Santa Claus, bro. You would not look like Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. So this NFT project you guys, you guys are planning to do, you guys want to do like a podcast, something like with that too? Actually on our roadmap is uh, at 10%, we will be releasing our podcast and we do give members special privileges to be able to call in or, you know, text in and talk and ask questions they want from our panel. So, and most of our panel is going to be pretty much people that kind of had went through the struggle because trust me, I don't know anyone that hasn't struggled to make it. It just does. It's not handed to you. It's a lot of work, a lot of failure, and just you just got to keep moving forward. It's not stepping back. There's so many themes. I mean, the girls that are that are here filming this, they've heard me say this a thousand and one times. Like, adversity builds character, right? Like, going through that really fucked up shit is what makes you a better business person. Do you think? Hundred percent. I mean, you went through an accident. I've you been, almost lost your leg. I've been through everything you can imagine. You. you had these breakdowns at work. You got into the club industry. You were deep partying deep hard. This. Partying hard. You were partying like nobody else could probably. Baby, yeah, dude, the level of your party, partying that you were doing back in the day. Is, yeah, it's is crazy. I, yeah, I got to the point where I, w- I would come to the club every once in a while and see you and be like, I can't fucking talk to this guy. I can't if, if was, I go over that that table, it's all done because you guys took it to a level that didn't need to go. Yeah, yeah, it just never ended. That's uh, that was the. I mean, it was fun. Uh, I'm glad we got to do it. it I'm not. I don't regret anything I've done in my life. So, really? like, not talking to me for a couple of years. 
I mean, I do regret you that you bit. you yeah. kind of left me in. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I saw was the blue check mark. So I was like, hey, cool guy. Oh, <laughs> I'm just wow, really? Uh, that's not why. Hey, man, sometimes you got to pay for it. That's all I, did, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even know you had the blue check mark. I didn't even pay attention to that. I was just trying to There's hit a price you on up. everything, bro. I'll hook you up. That's all good. I don't need that blue check mark. No. I'm Paul, good. I'm Paul good where I'm at. <laughs> so adversity builds character, though, right? You, you, yes. can't, you couldn't have gone through all that and be where you're at today, right? No. I mean, it had to be for that you were here. There, there was plenty of times that I sat by myself and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I, 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 I my accident, I should have given up, I didn't. I mean, no one knows what you go through mentally, just going through that for like almost three years of just not being able to do anything, kind of being depressed. I, I hate being a burden on other people. So my family had to go through hell and back, I mean, I found out when I was in the hospital, my mom didn't eat and she's diabetic. So she didn't eat for like almost a week because she was so worried about me. It just put a lot of thoughts in my head. And I was like, why the fuck did I do that? Like, like I put so many people through so much. But it grew you was, up fast as hell though, right? It, it did grow like, me up Everything fast. after that had to be easier. It was, it's not, never easy. I don't even like having an easy life because the challenges easier. is what makes you grow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, relative but to what I, you just went through, I mean, you had to learn to walk again too. Uh, yeah, it was you, hell. You're walking for a cane, for, you don't walk with a cane anymore. I no, mean, no, remember no, those no. days? Yeah, bro, I was in a wheelchair, then they gave me my crutches, and then I moved to a cane, and it, yeah, it was pretty bad. Like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want like my enemy to go through that, but it, it did help you. Uh, it kind of cut me off to where I, I don't have as much emotions, I guess. I just feel like I just have to push through shit. Like there's no giving up. Like whatever obstacle thrown in my way, I just kind of try to get past it. I mean, fuck, just recently I found out one of the guys that was working for me for, I don't even know if you might've met him or not, the little Mexican kid that was working for me for almost 10 years. I pretty much took him off the street when I had the vape shop. He kind of came to my vape shop and left. Um, he was like my son, literally like raised him, took him everywhere. He was with me every day. He worked at the club with me, did my pictures, worked at all the shops. Oh, yeah, I remember that dude, yeah, yeah. And then I found out that this whole time he was just scamming money from me. And oh, I literally shit. gave him money. I took him everywhere. I gave him my entire network. I said, look, if you wanna make money with these guys, but he, it's like, he was so set on being lazy and didn't wanna, grow because you would bust his balls like routinely bro, I, remember, I, would, I remember you would be on social media you would like bro, to i would bust his, bust his yeah. balls just because i was like bro wake up like let's fucking move i want to grow i don't want to be stagnant i don't like sitting in one place like i continuously want to grow so yeah right after <laughs> i found out he was taking money when i caught him on my camera that i put up secretly uh, the night before that i bought from amazon um <laughs> it was like such a hurtful thing and like I was so angry inside, I can't even explain it to you. It, it like really. Cause you felt betrayed, me, right? Yeah, it wasn't about the money at that point. It wasn't even the money. I told him I, I, I sat here for three hours, literally three hours. I had my rap guy come here, my other boy and my girlfriend come here because I was like so scared I'm gonna. You kill somebody? Do something, yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna, you know, yeah. Cause so, you, you happen to be a weapons enthusiast, let's be honest. Yeah. A couple of them around here, which is why uh, I'm going to say you look really handsome right now. Thank you. Yeah, but Don't shoot me. But no, it's it was just, it blew my mind. And, and I was literally so devastated. And, and like, I literally went back into like another depression mode where I couldn't. My girl's like, bro, you got to snap out of why it. You let this, why, well, why do you let something like that affect you? Like, why why does I, it did these it. poor choices impact? I mean, I understand you looked at them as like family and all that stuff. And I, I just I couldn't understand how it. someone could do that. It just, I guess I would never do something like that to anyone. I don't know. So I got a good friend whose, whose job it is, and he's actually been on the podcast, Roger Lipson. He, uh, I would always tell him like, I'm frustrated this person's lazy, or I'm frustrated with this person or that person. He would tell me, he would tell me straight up like, look, you got to stop expecting what you give yes. out of people. Yes, hundred percent. Like some people just don't have the I, capacity to I give gave that. that up. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't expect him. He probably just doesn't know. He probably doesn't have that in his like moral fabric. That's just not him. No disrespect to him. No. He's just built different. Yeah. 
and it, it just it sucked because I know like his mom and dad. Obviously, I've known them for so long. Yeah, it's been. And they work so fucking hard, bro. It just blows my mind how you see your mom and dad working their asses off, and you have all the opportunity to do whatever you want. I mean, fuck, you're driving Lamborghinis around. Bro, you're you driving. and I both know how many how many we're Middle Eastern, right? So you know how many Middle Eastern kids that, whose parents came to this country, who started from nothing. Yeah. Who came here like at 18, 19, 20 years old in some cases, got here with nothing, built an entire, like, whatever life they have yeah. today, own a home, and their kids are out here trying to flex on social media. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's such a completely different mindset. You can't really do anything with yeah. that. Some, sometimes people get it, sometimes people don't. That's yeah. not on you, that's on him. It, it is not. And I put it on myself for a while that I was like, how did I fail this kid? And how the fuck did it end up that he's like. And yet you didn't feel bad when you didn't talk to me for years. We gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> you don't feel maybe maybe right. next episode. I think <laughs> time is running out. <laughs> so I want to know the next plans for this place. I mean, obviously, this location's got to be doing well. You've been here for a long time. Yes. And oh, we don't even want to talk about what happened to the last location, bro. Wait, like I, I have stories for I, asked that. I have what stories for hours. <laughs> That's right. You moved here because something happened with the last one. What was that? Yeah, another great partner I um, fell into. Um, just found out he was doing stuff behind my back and it was another hit that I grew from. But the thing is, I literally, when I after him stealing money from me and all this just kept happening, happening, I was like on the verge of just being like, yo, I quit, I'm gonna go back to Wells Fargo. Were you really thinking about that? I was, like, I was like, maybe I should go back to doing like my corporate job and making my salary and doing nine to five and coming home. But then obviously I didn't want to do that. That was just me thinking because I was so Were upset you a vegan with too? someone. No, no, no. That's probably when I started eating meat again. Good. That's when things <laughs> got together, right? No, no. That's yeah. when shit was falling apart. <laughs> that's when shit was falling apart. But yeah, no. The old partner just found out he was doing stuff behind my back, and so what happens? But so now it's you. You're here. You got you know your partners that you trust, and and you got a good business, and you got obviously a number of cars that we're looking at here. You got more. Yeah. What's the next plan? I mean, do you open up more locations? How do you scale this for you? What's, well, the, what's the dream? The whole scaling, yeah. I'm, uh, I've am i been hit up a lot, different people out of state, <sighs> trying to do, obviously, what we do. Um, my next plan right now is opening up a Vegas location, which we've been working on. This place I don't have any partners with, but in Vegas I will have a couple partners, um, and we kind of want to go big out there. Because Vegas, you got to go big or you, you go, go home. Big, right? it's, it's kind of the culture. You you have to. There's no if, but you just go big. So that's in the works. We're waiting for all the licenses to go through. All the cars are already ordered. Already ordered? Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. They're, they they ordered a lot of cars. I'm can I ready. go with you and pretend like I'm rich one of these times? And like, Dude, you, know. you can roll anytime you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah out there, I'm going to just try to really network hard and really blow that up. But... That's that's the other thing with the whole NFT project that we're dropping is is going to be about like the exotics car clubs and we are going to give access to people to a few garages probably in like LA Miami you know the big spots New York really so they, if they get an NFT they have access to the garage or and taking out. Really? Cars here and there. There is a lot to go. I don't want to go too deep. Consider into. me a buyer, bro. I'm in. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah, buying yeah. stupid. In. I bought some <laughs> NFTs about the Beaver the other day. Like I'm in. Like just sign yeah, me up. yeah. And like I said, it's not just about the exotics. Obviously, it's for people who love cars, want to be part of the club. It's also about like the whole giving back. I think we're gonna drop a whole. Um, I don't know about a series, but we might. We're thinking about doing a an auction to where we can give some of that money for the war right now too. So yeah. So we're more about giving back and more about the utility of the whole NFT than the art aspect right now. And really people lose lose the idea. I think with the blockchain, like most of it's about utility. People are so caught up in like this $3 million picture of an ape. Yeah. They're losing, they're losing the value. So. Yeah, exactly. I, I got so many questions about this whole Las Vegas thing, but <laughs> like what kind of cars are on order? Like what, what, what brands we got here? I'm living by oh, cars. Oh, pretty much. When it comes to rentals, we, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I think I'm pretty sure they ordered at least four of the F F8s, the Ferraris. Oh, wow. Which I don't really agree on just, just because it's pretty expensive. 
And those are actually really popular right now. People really want to. They're popular, but Lamborghinis are always number one. You are a huge Lamborghini fan. Aren't you? I, I'm just, hey, numbers will show you. The, Lamborghinis this, this are okay. number one. So I've been seeing you go up to LA on, on shoots recently. Yes. What's going on with that? We do a lot of production with some artists and we do, uh, we've been doing uh, episodes. It's been about 10 episodes with a new MTV show that's gonna be dropping. I don't know when exactly, but my last one was just this last last week. I think that was the last one. So was this, was this always like the plan or is this kind of like supplemental income that came as the business group? No, I mean, people always hit us up for music videos. I've, I've, I've had music videos in my shop, actually, a few of them. I've seen some of them. Some yeah. of them are a little ethnic though, let's be honest. <laughs> They are. I'm, but. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure there was there was a straight like Hispanic band in here at one point getting down. It was good. Uh, dude, Bob machines the whole dude, thing. Dude, they were actually fuck one of the funnest. They were one of the great funnest ass time though. I don't. I think we were here till six in the morning and we were all pretty lit. I'm not gonna lie. I, I do not doubt it. But it was it was fun. Yeah, he's actually one of my really good friends now. Um, yeah. yeah. I literally, every time he goes anywhere, he actually supports me, wears my shirts at his concerts everywhere he goes. So no kidding? He's always actually Let's ordered know. a jacket for him because he wanted one so bad. So <laughs> I got him. Yeah, yeah. Uriel, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you, think, you think you found balance, though, as a business person at this point in your life, despite the fact that you might be a pes pescatarian and you haven't joined us in the real world yet, at least your girl understands and appreciates it. Yeah, I mean, shit, I feel bad. I put my girl through a lot, so I'm but, not a, I'm not an easy guy to date. But you found peace? I mean, are you, are you good? Are you at the yeah. point now where like, you're good with business? You still hungry for more? Like, where I'm are you always, at on that spectrum? I'm always hungry. Yeah? You can't let that hunger slow you down or stop, bro. That's That's all it is. It's not even about the money, really, I mean, you've seen my annual toy drives I do here. We do yeah, a lot of charity work that, I mean, I also haven't gotten my my. Was, was, yeah, it was you, you were supposed to come, weren't you? I was supposed to come. Yeah, year, yeah. you did. <laughs> it's just my wife, bro. I guess I got she had plans. <laughs> I forgot. I was like, I knew you told me you're gonna come, I wasn't and gonna you didn't come show up. I got stuck. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Next year, yeah. but yeah, the toy drive. Uh, my my biggest thing, honestly, nothing feels better to me than than being able to give back. So, and the next plan is try to take care of my parents as best as I can, and. We got big plans, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, at this point, I'm gonna stop you. We're gonna we're gonna roll into telling people how they can find you. How do they find the business? How do they find you on social media? So people are definitely gonna want to follow and make fun of you like I do. <laughs> I'm in the comment section. Look for the blue check mark. He doesn't have one. I do though. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> now we're out in Costa Mesa, and then we will be opening up in Vegas uh, under a different name, though. It's not gonna be under First Class Exotics. Uh, that one will be called, I believe we're going to go with uh, Rush Exotics. Okay. So it goes with the whole theme in Las Vegas. And uh, yeah, actually my girl's uh, parents live in Vegas. So we I may go have there noticed a lot. social media stories. Yeah. What? Oh, I may yeah. have noticed, yeah, oh, social bro. media stories. Yeah. It's like you're having a good time. I mean, they're the best. Like we go right on the helicopter. It's it's pretty badass. I know, bro. I, got I some mean, his birthday is on my this. birthday. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. So we're like very much alike. We go shoot rockets. We go off-roading and fucking helicopters. And Are you going to move to Vegas? Uh, I probably will have to be there for a few months. What? Yeah. You're going to move to Vegas? No partying. We just became friends no again. No partying. Leave? Oh, get the fuck out of here. If you, if you actually believe you're not going to party, I don't. that's full of shit. Why are you going to lie to everybody? <laughs> it's going on YouTube. You know you're going to lie to everybody telling me you're not going to party? I'm not going to go party. Yeah, that that is ass. not true at yeah, all. So you I'm are a liar, <laughs> sir. You were partying a couple nights ago at a birthday party, bro. I've seen your social media. That was media my feed. birthday party. It doesn't matter. <laughs> can, I, can I drink <laughs> no, at my own birthday? You can't go out. <laughs> I didn't even want to go, actually. That was not even part of it. I told them no going out, no nothing. Let's go have a dinner. I thought I was going to go have a dinner with my lovely wife to be, maybe. Wow, more Hennessy for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he wound up going to, I think it was Mesa afterward or something like that, right? We did it. Yeah, it was good. We did. We had... Uh, really good dinner. You look really sweaty in the photos. Just, just so you know. No, it was actually it was pouring that night. Was it really? It I, was pouring. It was rain. It wasn't because you were sweating. No, I don't. Or you were inside a building. I don't sweat, bro. Yeah, get, my shine <laughs> stays. My shine. What's stays. your Instagram handle? Tell everybody where to find you at. At First Class Exotics. And your personal one too. Oh, I don't want them to at Hustlin you. Ali. And make sure to send him a lot of bots and a lot of spam if you can. No, no, please. That. We don't like that. 
I uh, appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. I love you. Still. It's very good seeing you finally, bro. It's been, shit, how many years? Too many years. Too many years. Right. You're an asshole. Thank you. Love you. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation on the Higher Standard Podcast. Make sure to hit subscribe or follow on whatever platform you are listening to this on. If you like this episode, please write a review and share it with us. You're getting the show up and running right now, so every message, every review, and every note counts. This show exists to showcase what's possible when leaders decide to uphold a higher standard for their businesses, their investments, their families, and most importantly, themselves. If you want to see more of my content, I post daily on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, so be sure to follow me on your favorite social media platform. And with that, it is a wrap. And as always, I look forward to hanging with you all on the next episode.